Oh, it works. Surprise, surprise. Um, when I um, made the proposal for this presentation, it is some time ago, I expected it as a success story. And in the end, it's um, maybe not really a success. It was a, a GSOC project this year, so it's not my work, uh, basically. Um, what I wanted to present is how it uh, goes from the first step of the usability team, where we um, identify flaws in the software, to the implementation in the end, what happens uh, there, and how it looks like this. Work was done by Rishab Kumar and Katerina Behrens, uh, she's not with that, but, and Jay, me. So, for the introduction. Um, many of you may, uh, wow, it works. It was uh, the biggest issue by, by uh, creating this presentation to, to have uh, a video included, embedded in, in, in the Linux. Very impressive that it works. Um, many of you may um, wonder why we need some work for, the, um, for this dialogue. It is uh, powerful, it has all the features, you can uh, get um, solid colors, or you go to the sidebar and select in the sidebar the properties. You have uh, uh, not so difficult to use uh, layout. Uh, list box where you can quickly go to red and select red. You didn't select red. Uh, select once again. Um, and red is not red, so you need to change, but you change everything. So it's not clear, but the upper color is in relation to the lower. It is, when you change the RGB value, you get the information here in this dialog. If you do not change the RGB value, you uh, have uh, the same information twice. It's a little bit weird. And one problem, obviously, is that you have a starting tab where you get the area fill stuff and something similar in, in, the, in the tabs. So you start at area, go to, for instance, gradient, or here it's uh, hatching, and it's the same as it's, uh, it's the first tab. On the other hand, it's not really the same because the first step has not uh, all means to deal with the properties. You need sometimes to switch to the other uh, tab. And it could be quite difficult to tweak information. This one, bitmap, you have a number of really crazy uh, options like X offset, Y offset, tile, Check boxes all spread over the UI um, a placement thing. You can uh, deal with all the features, and you have me. I have no clue what I'm doing. Not more than uh, the, the preview below. And when you go to the actual tab bitmap, what happens? Do you get the same information? No. You will not. What happens now it, uh, in the presentation is the X and Y offset. It's um, iterating through, so you can see there is some movements in the Y and X axis of the tiling. It's um, hard to understand why it is implemented, and uh, it has some relation to the um, to the other features. Just wanted to show it in the background a little bit that. It is some crazy stuff. That's a bitmap tab. Shows completely different information. For gradients, you have more options in the gradient tab. For bitmaps, you have more options in the area tab. Some stupid thing. And the reason to have tabs is clear. It's because uh, area can be uh, changed for, for instance, the paragraph settings. A, a paragraph uh, settings dialog has a lot of tabs itself. And when you add a tab gradient to the um, indentation tabs, next to indentation you get uh, a tab for gradient and another tab for bitmap, it makes no sense. So in, in, in these um, dialogues, you get only the area 
properties and you cannot tweak the other settings there. It's only relevant here for the uh, for shapes and in draw or whatever, just to show all the features. And one slide to uh, for, for the for the notes to uh, recapitulate. It's uh, not easy to access the information. It's uh, spread over the display. The tabs are not intuitive to use. And uh, pickers are a little bit uh, of an issue because it's always uh, a drop down. You, you have only this color from the drop down and in most of the controls, for instance, a gradient, you can choose from the currently active um, palette. Can you, you can choose color from this palette and nothing else. Can I say I want a, a pure red if you don't have uh, the right palette chosen? And um, some features that have been introduced in the past in the sidebar uh, are in, uh, not available in the dialogue. So what we um, create as a proposal is um, something like this. We want to achieve consistency so that a dialogue is uh, the same at every place where you deal with uh, colors and background. We want to have it easy to use. Our vision is, the LibreOffice vision is, simple for beginners, powerful for the experts. So we need to um, put it into work somehow. So the dialogue needs to be simple for everyone. And that's uh, why we uh, focus on presets. We have in, in, um, in all sections, never, uh, it's not a tab anymore, it's a section. In all sections of the uh, um, options, we introduce a preset so that users can choose the settings from the preset. It's just one click away. And uh, if the user wants, they can tweak the chosen preset, change something, and add or delete the uh, settings that are uh, set up in the options by the buttons uh, under the preset. And of course, uh, a preview so that you uh, see what happens is necessary, of course. And that's the concept. Looks clean, I hope, reasonable. It has an apply button. I personally miss apply really um, because the preview is a tiny thing and sometimes I want to see it included in, in the drawing or in the document if it fits to the other object there. So, apply would be really nice. So what happened? Let's uh, have a look how it was before for solid color and how we created for this particular section. Solid color was, um, as I said, you have um, a weird uh, selection. You have a, a name of a color and if you enter the name, you jump to the uh, respective color. So name red means you select red in the dropdown. The dropdown is there to select a color. And the color picker below is there to select a color. Three options to select the same object, but nothing to change the palette. You have no chance to get a real red. There isn't any in this palette. What you can do is to jump over to the RGB values and change the RGB values or to pick something, you, it's, it's well known. So what we suggest is uh, the, the common, uh, what was introduced in the sidebar, uh, just the normal color picker with a, a chooser for the palette and something with a recent color so that you uh, select something. But, uh, if you do repeat a task, you add a couple of shapes or do some uh, tweaks to your document, uh, you want to repeat the same operation and uh, the recently used colors should be available there. That's the task. And um, next to it, um, active and new means I want to compare where I come from. Active is the color uh, of the object that you, um, where you started the dialogue. It should be just an information so you see it was a green color and the new color it will be uh, in, in this relation to it. What happened is that, um, in, uh, sorry for the um, um, 
and, and not well aligned controls. It's in a state where you, uh, you have to uh, cherry pick pieces of the code. It's um, not, um, not finished and the cherry pick code compiled against Qt is not well aligned. You can see it at several places right now. It's not the best. But it looks a little bit similar to, um, to what uh, we proposed. You can select a palette. You get the color below and select one of the colors from this palette. You get the active color with the information. It is an issue of the pre-scene um, that you do not um, read the, uh, the, um, uh, the labels that are grayed out, but it should be visible that uh, RGB values of the active color, where you come from, white shape, is um, uh, 250-50 for all. And uh, for the new, you can, of course, have the RGB values. So close to what we have. What you can do is to add the color to the recent color. It's um, below there. You get also a, a new palette, custom a, a user palette, where you can collect all the things that, um, that you want to integrate in the palette. It was before in a, a, a dialogue in, a, in the user options, where you could tools, options, color, and there you uh, could have uh, uh, up to 5.3. Uh, configure a palette, but you do not create your own, you tweak existing palette. You could delete colors from the standard palette. You could change red into green or add something there. Now, this um, section or is this option will be removed. So tools option color will be, is obsolete, but you get uh, the feature to add colors to the user palette. And the factory settings will uh, not get compromised anymore. It is uh, something like this. What has been also done is that recent colors um, have been fixed. There was a bug that uh, makes it uh, only uh, working for the active object. If you s uh, switch from one um, shape, for instance, to another one, all the recent color were lost. There was nothing. It uh, does not depend on the document or a, a running application. It was the, the active object. Switching from one object to another uh, lead to um, uh, a loss in, in the recently used colors. So it was a meaningless function. This one has been fixed. What you do is uh, recorded and stored. So if you go to another object, you get the recently used colors. If you close the document, open another one, you get the recently used colors. And if you restart the application, still recently used colors. It is one more beyond the custom colors. This one is a couple of custom colors that I created here. So something uh, that's a real success. Gradient, uh, need to go a little bit faster. Gradient. Um, is uh, a challenge because it would be nice to have a multi-stop gradient, to have something to um, visually deal with the gradient. It was the, the idea to have uh, some uh, visual controls in the middle above. It's kind of a slider and you slide the, the stop between two colors uh, at a, at a certain position and you adapt kind of Bezier or whatever it is, how it is implemented, you, you adapt the, the position. So this one should uh, end in a, in, a, in a perfect sundown, for instance. To get it, you need more than uh, two colors, from red to yellow in 10 steps, make it not a sundown. Or if you want to have a, a multi-stop uh, gradient, which is a rainbow, which all the colors, that's not possible. It is um, not easy because we do not have any multi-stop gradient. And the advanced control is also not easy to implement. So has not been done. What we get is some kind of consistency, which is good. Consistency in terms of presets on the left hand, you choose the uh, 
predefined uh, gradient uh, from the left side, and you have options in the middle to tweak this uh, gradient or to create something new and a preview. But how it is done is uh, the same as before, except the fact that uh, from and to, which are colors, are um, uh, uh, shown in a way that, it, that you can choose a palette. I hope so. It was a plan that you can uh, have all the uh, access to all the colors. Hatching and patterns are pretty simple. It should be similar, a preset, options, preview for hatching and patterns. Patterns uh, were uh, implemented as part of the bitmap because internally the uh, bitmap pattern, pattern was uh, converted into a bitmap and applied as a bitmap with a tiling feature to the, uh, to the object where you have, want to have it as a background. So uh, for the user it's um, not really expected that you have a pattern that is a bitmap. It's a weird position to deal with the pattern. So the proposal is to have a pattern uh, as an extra section here. It was a task to uh, get the pattern option out of the bitmap. And yes, it has been done. I cannot show the pattern thing because it, it crashes the dialog in the current state, but it works. Um, it looks similar to this one. I think it's, it's pretty nice. You can select a hatching, predefined hatching. You can change all the features. We have um, a few things that needs uh, discussion. For instance, the background color, which is not part of the hatching itself. It is uh, an additional option, and we need to um, have a better placement on somehow. But in the end, uh, basically, it's, it's pretty well implemented. Last but not least, the bitmap thing. Bitmaps, as I said, is uh, a weird uh, feature. Um, I tried some time, and we, uh, all in the team, we, we tried to figure out what it means to have an X and Y offset together with a tiling and an option to have an original size, but there are many features that uh, are uh, going together, and in the end, you do not know what you do. So the proposal is to throw away all the things and to have it um, as known from wallpapers. On wallpaper, uh, you can have it an original, or you stretch it, or you zoom it, or you tile it. That's all. And perhaps a few more uh, things that are needed. It was. Um, it is uh, too simple here. It is not possible, first of all, to drop features. We cannot just ignore the feature because documents created before the change wouldn't be, um, you couldn't load a document that has been created before. If the uh, specification uh, has, uh, is, uh, contains uh, this feature, we need to deal with it. It's also something we, we, we have to take into account. And um, there is, in this case, uh, one more option missing. So we end up in, in this uh, UI. Of course, it has add import feature, all the things. Uh, you start with uh, selecting uh, add style, in this case, tiled, there you have uh, original, zoomed, uh, stretched, and uh, all the other th things, and it affects the size. If you change from original, which means 100%, to stretched, it depends on the size of the uh, origin, uh, how it is applied. For instance, if you have a rectangle with uh, two by one, it could be uh, the fact that you have 200% and 100% as a perfectly stretched object. If you zoom, it means it uh, has to be um, equally sized so that it fits all the screen, meaning with a height 200%. That was the idea. It is not uh, fully implemented, and it has 
some more mm, not so easy to understand features like the tiling position where you move um, the column where it starts uh, somehow away. Um, I'm not sure that it's uh, really an, an improvement to the dialogue besides the consistency. Of course, what we get is uh, a dialogue which works in, in, in every situation, on every um, source. You can open this dialogue as a paragraph background, and you get the same dialogue as for a shape or a page background. It works perfectly. So putting all together with a nice kitten in the background, no presentation without a kitten, um, I hope um, that the concept is clear and easy to understand. And uh, that the workflow is uh, something which uh, is accepted or well accepted by the users. We uh, had a, uh, a lot of issues that have to be solved first. It was a, um, a small obstacle for the, um, for the GSOC student because he did a lot of bug fixing in it before he started to rework the dialogue need to fix the bugs. And some of my personal uh, um, outcomes, it's, um, it's not easy or not possible in, a, in, in such a, in, um, a scenario with a student to do large scale changes like multi-stop uh, uh, gradients. Uh, Caligra has multi-stop gradients, sounds to me like a simple task, but it isn't as you need to uh, make sure that it works for the uh, uh, files. You need to store it in, in the ODF format, but also in the PDF. You need to make sure that you can read it from other documents, from SVG, from everything. But it's um, a badly uh, requested feature. We trust on gradients that come from, from uh, Inkscape and load it as uh, small lines. So it's, uh, it's something which should be implemented. Someone needs to take care about gradients. Um, my personal expectation to GSOC student was too high, and uh, take it into account, sorry for that. And um, the issue is that I think, uh, or what does it mean? Uh, regressions are in a problem for us, we cannot uh, update everything at once. We need to take care about uh, the past and uh, our specifications. So um, regressions and uh, compatibility issues uh, are um, something which um, prevents good usability, in my opinion, or it is a result of this uh, project. So Google is a of code. Thanks a lot.